We've always used social media as a way to escape the mundane. Why be yourself when you can pretend to be an up-and-coming photojournalist, a power-hungry sociopathic megalomaniac, you're now your fist gunning abuse because I can just jump off, bro. Or an e-celeb that has a funny catchphrase. Anyways. Insect. Film and TV, although being a lot more linear, is still a form of escapism. Check this out. Quarantine has had the movie industry suffering more than ever, even including the funny reverse film that was prophesized to bring people running back to the theaters, only to fail to even double its budget. Which is surprising because, like most people, I paid to see the film twice, thinking I'd be able to understand the dialogue on a second viewing. What are these blitzes like? Four weeks, three times. You didn't make it. So where did it come from? With so many of us being stuck at home, theatres, for the most part, have been put to sleep. At least in the UK anyway, where in the year 2021, we still bravely pay for our telly licenses. New Zealand may have zero cases, but at least we have fish and chips, football, and wife. And at home is where the lower budget films have boomed, with streaming platforms producing more content than ever for a monthly fee. Netflix has great shows that they never made. Amazon Video has great movies they never made. Hulu has Breaking Bad if Walter White left the meth business. And Disney has Breaking Bad if Gus Fring left the meth business. YouTube Originals have also come onto the scene. And one franchise that's probably YouTube Originals most popular is the hairline thinning, starring Logan Paul. What is the premise of this movie? What is it all about? Who wants to take the lead on this? Oh! <laughs> I was like, yeah. Now, the original thinning movie came out in 2016, and saying that like it was a while ago is unironically terrifying. Every Day Bro came out after the thinning. Good. Good God. That's the same year Mass Effect Andromeda came out, and both are pretty much on par with the facial animations. The Thinning was directed by Michael Gallagher, the same guy who directed the Smiley film I covered a few months ago. And as we all know, that film was filled with Oscar nominations. Who's <laughs> not our enemies? You don't get to be king of the internet assholes. Be friends? Yeah. Yeah. He was apparently a YouTuber himself at one point, running the channel Totally Sketch, which has over a million subscribers. The main premise being sketch comedy, with the comedy being funny screaming. Watch yeah. this, right now. Oh! And apparently, Michael's biggest fear is spiders. It's weird too, because this film got a lot of nominations. I mean, it didn't win any of them. And to be fair, most of the nominations were from the streamies. So take from that what you will. Such an amazing city full of arts, culture, and uh, beautiful landmarks, of course. It's too bad though, none of us are gonna um, ever see those because we're always stuck inside making videos. Oh, that, uh, that didn't age well. Also, if you enjoy me punching down a mediocre content, please consider subscribing. It's free, and only 99% of you watching are subscribed, which is honestly pathetic. If the green Minecraft stick man can get 18 million five-year-olds to subscribe, then I deserve at least half of that. The opening text tells us that the world has been ravaged by overpopulation, and the UN now asks all countries to cut their population by 5% every year. Why contain it? In America, they've picked students as the choice group, giving them a standardized test once a year, with the lowest scoring students being executed. Cue title card. <laughs> So, this only affects countries that are members of the UN. So basically, Palestine and the Vatican City are allowed to do whatever they want. Good to know. The film takes place in Austin, Texas, 18 hours before the thinning, and apart from the brown filter in the skyline, making it look like a Breaking Bad scene in Mexico, everything looks normal. That's because the film's set after the mass culling has been normalized, so things have returned to normal for the most part apart from the mass cullings. This basically means there was no need to spend extra budget making the world look more like a dystopia. Move over, Judge Dredd in your mega cities. I'm innocent. Justice comes at a price. Remember what we talked about? Use the product rule to find the derivative. I can't do this. <laughs> hey, Corinne. Not I like how the kid's just treating it like it's homework, you know, or something that isn't life or death. I learn this by tomorrow. I'm totally fried. Yes, you will be fried. 
on the electric chair. That's a good, that's a good one. I'm funny. The boy, Simon, no connection to a lonely man in Sweden, offers a bribe to the girl and she gives him contact lenses that help him cheat the exam. Oh my god. This really is like standardized testing. I love all the useless info the lenses have as well. Like, what is anything on the right side meant to be? It, it just looks like it's Pong or something. The girl, Lena, is the main lead of the film. Well, apart from that one gentleman who's colorblind. And she's played by Peyton List, known for playing as Tori in Cobra Kai. The love interest in Diary of a Wimpy Kid and Emma Ross in the Disney show, Bunked. I've never watched Bunked, but from this five second clip, you can tell pretty much what the entire show's like. We're just talking about my Aunt Earlene, who came here once to get out of town after she got caught stealing a recipe to enter a pie-making contest. And is this story making sense yet? Cause I can keep it going. Bruh. Lena gets a call from her doctor, telling her that her mother is trying to leave the hospital against their advice. So she'd rather spend the time she has left at home instead of the hospital. You need to be here, they can't treat you at home. So we're given a pretty emotional opening here. I mean, nothing really to criticize. It's to the point. No sad music, and the delivery is brutally honest. I think the best thing anyone can do now is to just keep her comfortable. We cut to the governor's mansion 12 hours before the thinning. The governor of who, you may ask? Oh, there he is, the mother effing blueberry. Run to the kitchen, got anything? I'm good, Blake. Thanks for asking. You go ahead. This is Blake Redding, son of the governor, and he's a very naughty boy. Sneaking out at night, jumping over a three foot tall gate to meet with Ellie Harper. If she looks familiar, that's because she was frequently featured on Teens React. Her real name is Leah Marie Johnson, and she is so famous that she has her own Wikipedia article, just like PewDiePie. <laughs> Their chemistry even goes offset as well, where Logan accidentally insults her for eating food. She's like, I, I, I'm hungry, I'm gonna go grab another cookie. And I was on, I was on my like, third day of the juice cleanse, and sometimes I say stuff like, uh, to convince myself I don't need food. And I was like, uh, like you don't need a cookie. Not like, and oh. They sneak into someone's backyard to go skinny dipping, the perfect excuse for Logan to show his abs, as this was a requirement in the contract if he was ever going to appear in this film. We're in this together. I'll take care of you. Hey, Blake. You know, I think I do want something from the kitchen. Got it. He gets brought back to his father, the governor, Dean Redding, played by Matthew Glaive. I'm not too sure about any of the films he's been in, apart from starring in a, a Pulp Fiction parody film that has uh, three stars on IMDb. It's not very good. I have a sign on my back that says, blow smoke up my ass. Did you put another sign on the director's back? Dean grills Logan. Look, let... I'm not gonna call him Blake the whole film, come on. This is the guy who broke every plate within a five kilometer radius. You want a Pop-Tart? Um... No thanks. Hmm. I'm not even sure what the point of this bit is, like, maybe it's to show some food is super scarce compared to others. Or maybe he's literally just a man-child keeping sweets in a secret box on his fireplace. I wonder if I have time to stop for a snack. He goes on to say Logan should stop seeing Ellie because she's a distraction. The night before a life-altering test? It's not the moment. And honestly, seeing Logan quiet and reserved is really... Uh, awkward? Even in real life, he's outspoken and a total extrovert, but seeing him act like he's, you know, the intimidated person, it's really out of character for him. He wasn't even this bad in airplane mode. Are you willing and capable to assist in the event of an emergency? No! No, I'm fucking not! Now you have tomorrow, and next year. And after that, you have the whole rest of your life to be distracted. Don't F it up. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but they dubbed him saying the naughty word. Because, you know, young adults being called like they're cattle, totally fine. But the naughty swear word? No, 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 no. We cut to the morning three hours before the thinning and see the campus, Vista Point High, has been converted into some kind of like half prison. Get it? Because that's, that, that's how you feel at school. The thing is, it looks like these shots were filmed at the perimeter of an actual prison. So it wouldn't surprise me if they got the rights to the same prison where they film Beyond Scared Straight from. We can see students being checked before entering and all the guards are wearing face gear. 
I understand the best way to dehumanize someone is by taking away their face, but I'm not sure why they all had to wear black eye makeup behind the mask as well. You know, it, it looks like some kind of cheap Batman cosplay. It's just really jarring because you can see teachers walking around with lanyards right next to Rainbow Six Siege operators. I get they're doing this normal mix of society and dystopia, but what, am I supposed to see someone in power armor that holds the door open for you? Simon, the kid from the beginning, not to be confused by a lonely Swedish man, Protect. is given a slight nudge, and I mean like a worm's poke level of nudging, causing him to jolt forward and losing his contact lenses, and not being able to find them when someone with Rico in shoes walks over them. How brave. Also, the guards have uh, voice changes, and it, it, it doesn't even sound intimidating. Commence lockdown sequence. Yes, sir. Said you were quite the Joker. I had a Darth Vader mask as a kid, and the inbuilt voice changer, it, it sounds pretty much the same. Take out the garbage. Man, shut your bitch ass up. And then, Simon commits the worst offense of all, swearing in a YouTube video. Shit. Bruh. That's it. Tape it off. This is a biohazard. Give this guy a mature rating and make sure no sponsors touch him again. Because it's the big test and some people might not come out of this alive, it's time for the melodramatic slow-mo cam. Wow, look at that. Parents hugging their children in slow motion. A bag being searched in slow motion. Do you feel emotion yet? No. Here, add some Hideo Kojima lens flares. Have a teacher put the ashes of the students on his face. Logan then tries to talk to someone of the opposite gender and fails. Miserably. Um, Lana, right? Yeah, Lena. Lena, sorry, um... He wants Lena to give him one of the contact lenses to cheat the exam, but she's already gave the last one to Simon. Oh, I didn't. Hmm. Lena is then joined by her friend, kind of flirty boyfriend, maybe? His name's Kellen. Well, it's almost as tragic as being in love with your best friend who's in love with a guy that doesn't even know her name. But that's just something I saw in a movie once. Not today, Gallen. Yeah, you're right. Tomorrow's actually better for me anyway. I feel the other students lining up perfectly represent the test audience when they were shown this interaction in the film. One of the students lining up gets scanned, and he gets caught with a bunch of answers scribbled on his arm. Pathetic. If you're gonna try and cheat, at least do it right. And I basically cheated through all my exams, and I passed. If my school are watching this, if you try sue me, try it. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I can get you arrested. How are you doing now? Whoa. I've never seen a kid make it past the guards before. Kellen, are you hacking into your dad's account again? Uh, yeah. So, firstly, he didn't escape. He's made it about 100 yards, and there's still a giant fence in the way. Secondly, Kellen isn't doing any Matrix-style hacking. He's just putting in his dad's email and password. I will give them this, though. The kid being captured is actually filmed from a different angle on Kellen's phone. Because it's so common in these films when they film something on a phone, and they just yoink footage from the actual studio camera. Also, when they go to hit him, look how flimsy their battens are. You might as well just spray him with silly string. <laughs> Inside the campus, which looks totally normal, apart from the walls being painted grey. Seriously, just make them like a bright colour and it'll look like a normal college again. We can see Logan reunite with his girlfriend Ellie, and assures her everything will be fine. They lock down the school with shutters, in case anyone tries to escape during the exam. Because, you know, the, the guys with battens clearly can't do their job. Commence lockdown sequence. I love as well how this is the only guard in the film with no gloves on, because they can't operate the touch screen with them on. They're introduced to the exam, the usual rules, no talking, no looking around. But then they throw this in for some reason. And no matter how hard something looks, there's always a chance. A chance of what? <laughs> Dying? Bruh. Like, you see, half of the students here are terrified. You might as well fit them with shotgun collars that explode if they get a question wrong. The test is two hours long, and we can see the tablets having four sections. And how much of a pass rate do you actually need to not get culled? Getting one question wrong could give you a 75% pass rate. So can you only get one question wrong, or none at all? Okay, here are the results. And to add insult to injury, you get the results pretty much as soon as the test is completed. But instead of getting your scores, you're just named if you failed, and then you're taken away like you've lost the prices right or something. Touch me. Come on. Touch me. Touch me. Lane Vic. No, 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 no. Ah. They also do this fake cop out where you think the Kellen guy failed, mostly because he can't stop sweating the entire exam. But nope, it's Ellie instead. 
far. If only she revised instead of skinny dipping. I know I should be looking at Ellie losing her life, but I just can't take my eyes off Logan Paul's bicep. Look at it, hugging his tight shirt. I'm happy that his bicep was credited before Leah Marie Johnson. <laughs> Logan, unhappy with his girlfriend being no-scoped, tries to call his dad to ask a favor to get her a quick revive. Call of Duty reference. <laughs> Laugh now. Dad, they took Ellie. She's going to the thinning. Oh, God. I'm sorry, son. We have, we have to do something, Dad. Just make a phone call. You can say it was a mistake. But you know I can't do that. I'm sorry, son. My hands are tied. Fucking meow! Logan is so angry, he nearly broke his iPhone 11 and tries to save Ellie by fighting against the system. What are you doing? You're back in line! Ellie runs the complete opposite way of every other escapee because, you know, she needs more screen time. Runs into a bunch of GTA pedestrians and gets captured again anyway. But first... You're aboard a large vessel and someone dropped a jar in a lab and now everyone's infected. You're the last person alive and need to defend yourself. Uh, if I get some plywood for barricades, a laser for self-defense, and the Dark Knight on Blu-ray to pass the time, I should be okay. Oh, a merchant ship. Okay, May maybe they can help me trade something I can use. You go to buy all the supplies you need, but there's one problem. When the ship got infected, it was five minutes <laughs> before payday, so you don't have enough money to defend yourself. <laughs> The merchant ship takes off, and you're left all alone with the monsters. If only I installed honey on my browser, I could have avoided all of this. Honey can save you loads of money by finding coupons and applying them to your checkout. Congratulations, you won. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh no, it's totally free and can be installed in two easy clicks. When you apply honey with over 30,000 supported sites, wait a moment as honey tries to find the coupon codes and you'll watch the prices drop. Here are some satisfied customers. You can download honey by going to, by going to joinhoney.com forward slash pyro. Oh, oh my god, oh, security detail, I'm saved, I knew it, all I had to do was hold on just a little bit. The film cuts to a year later, exactly 24 hours before the next thinning. No time for world building, we have to watch students suffer. But not before a paid advertisement of Logan Paul topless again, completing his girlfriend death revenge workout. Three hours before the thinning, and we can see kids being escorted to their first thinning exam. So this seems to be a thing people take every year, but it's not really clear when they stop. Do adults not have to take the exam anymore? Is there a, a boomer thinning? So this would mean all the adults are super intelligent as they've whittled down Touch only the me. highest scoring people. Bitch! How many sides does a pentagon have? Five. What causes disease? Bacteria. How many letters are in the alphabet? 26. By the way, if what she's saying here sounds familiar, it's because it was plastered all over the promotional material for this film back in 2016. How many sides does a pentagon have? Five. What causes disease? Bacteria. How many letters are in the alphabet? 26. 20 million views, by the way. Literally inescapable. I'm not sure why she didn't give her sister the contacts to cheat. I mean, that was a, a really good plot point, and it's just never mentioned again. Maybe she'd cough and they'd fall out like the last guy. <laughs> Logan's dad comes in to wish him luck, but you can tell their relationship has only gotten worse after Ellie died. Blake, I wish there was something I could have done. But none of us are above the law. Not me, not you, not Ellie. That's a good line. You should use it in your speech today. And then, The Thinning does something very brave no American film has ever done before. Mocking the British. Oh, well, do I do this every day? Hello? Do I look British? Do I look like a British person? <laughs> what? What the? 
Out of the way, bitches. I like how the guy who pushed him looks like a scuffed Robert Patterson too. And he exits the scene with the most pathetic parkour I've seen in my life. And just to make sure, like, you know he's an antagonistic character, he throws some random guy's phone for no reason. The kids watch an animation about why they take the thinning, basically explaining the world was uninhabitable from overpopulation. I like this animation. It gives a satirical take on how bad the situation is, even including the royalty happy free music you hear in Vanos gaming videos. Others only let mommies and daddies have one baby. In America, what if only the smartest boys and girls got to live here? We also learn it's only people from 1st to 12th grade that are tested. So basically, their entire society is based on hoping that if you do Russian roulette for 12 years straight, you'll hopefully come out a model citizen and make America proud. If you're not intelligent enough, you get punished, but illness out of your control is okay, I guess. Oh yeah, remember that douche character? He brought a football into the hall, just to remind you that he's a jock. Meanwhile, in the governor's house, he's just found a tape from Logan saying he's going to purposely fail the exam to spite his father. If you're watching this video, then I'm no longer alive. Today, I will be filling in enough incorrect answers to definitively fail my 10 41 exam. My dad wants to stand by this system. He's gonna have to stand by a system that put his own son to death. He can't reach Logan because the campus is on lockdown for the exam, so chair goes smashy smashy. Logan throwing the exam by picking every answer as D. Like, <laughs> could you imagine the small chance that every answer was D and he just completely aces the test? Meanwhile, one of the kids asks for help with the test. Yes, and my income is much more important than your life. The test is finished, and we see the children and students being escorted out. Sarah Foster. No, okay, no, 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 no! If you're wondering why she got five more seconds of screen time than the other students being dragged away, that's because in a previous scene, she offered the teacher sexual favors, hoping he'd rig the test for her but he didn't. Betrayal. We see Kellen worried about failing again. Yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not falling for the fake out twice in a row, buddy. Nice try. But what happens instead is Logan passes while the clever girl Lena fails. This is because in the previous scene, the head of security, Simon Mason, not to be confused with amazing role model, Mason from Black Ops. Just stop acting like a baby. Oh, no. No, got a call from Logan's father asking him to botch the test. So he swapped Logan's results with Lena's. Literally sentencing an innocent person to death, by the way. What, 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 what did you say 10 minutes ago? I wish there was something I could have done, but none of us are above the law. Not me, not you. Bruh. Also, Lena's kid sister might have failed too, but you know, who, who cares? She had like seven seconds of screen time. Is he safe? The transfer is complete. Everything is in order, Governor. Mason, I appreciate your discretion. As always, I need the word from you to make it official. Are we approved to commence the thinning? You are approved. Yes, sir. Good. Good, are you ready? Time to sell the dream. Lena's teacher tries to stop her, but security say that there's no mistake. There's no mistake. So she slips Lena something before she's taken away. The next scene is a party, and people seem to be in really high spirits. I mean, I get it, you avoided being killed, but you're telling me that no one here lost a friend or family member today? And finally, we found where 90% of the $1 million budget went. Governor Dean, ready! Thank you, Georgie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a great day in Texas! The governor gives a big speech about how crime rates are reduced, budget deficit, blah, 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 blah. We, we've all seen the purge, we know, kill people good. If you don't support our great society, then you are living off the system. That is a parasite. And do you know what we do with parasites? We wash them out! Ooh, someone's been playing Bioshock recently. I'm going for the Casey Neistat look. Logan sneaks out to try and get some revenge. And seeing a six foot two ripped man whimpering, calling the guard sir. <laughs> I don't know, it just comes off as really awkward. Uh, sir.
Logan beats the guard with his baton, adding electric sound effects. Because uh, I guess the Batons have those now. Back at the party, Kellen, the only person showing any kind of remorse, logs into his dad's account to view the cameras. Something that probably should be picked up by the security literally watching him on the cameras, but... I guess that's never acknowledged. Logan manages to get into the security room, conveniently, just as Mason leaves it. Like, imagine if he didn't have to go to the toilet at that specific point. Anyways, he pulls out a bunch of wires, which leads the prop team to replace all the normal bulbs with red ones. So now, we have $200 of budget left. And apparently this small box contained the electricity for everywhere in the entire complex, including the shackles for the failed students. Lena is able to escape, the thing her teacher gave her being an ID fob to get out of the room. Again, this wasn't planned, as Logan had no idea that that teacher was going to give Lena that fob, so if these two didn't come together by sheer coincidence, then this non-existent plan never would have worked. What are they doing out of the chairs? Some of the restraints shorted during the power outage, but we got it under control. Have you done a head count? Sir, the door's locked. There's no way they could've... I've also just noticed how much of a Star Wars scene this looks like. You've got the dim red lighting, the voice changer that sounds like an off-brand Kylo Ren, and Mason, who in poor lighting, kind of looks like Kylo Ren. You lost a student. I don't know how she got out. She? Her name is Lena Michaels. And where is she? Lena, caught at a door she doesn't have access to, tries some of the worst lying I have seen in a movie. It's about time. I called for you 10 minutes ago. What? I'm Miss Birch. I teach 10th to 12th grade. Wait, why are you wearing- I just saw a student go down that stairwell. I just love how she did everything wrong here. Like, she could have used him to look the other way and try another corridor. You know, not jump on his back, maybe. But don't worry. Logan Paul is here to overpower him. How could he have stood a chance <laughs> with such huge biceps? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna... The bicep bit's dead. I'm gonna stop that now. Blake? Lauren? You failed the test? It's Lena. Oh my god. Was that a reoccurring joke? They finally did it, guys. The thinning writing staff have knocked it out the park yet again with their Christopher Nolan tier writing. Level four breach. Level four breach. I don't think I've heard a less enthusiastic alarm sound in my entire life. Also, you know you'd just be able to solve the runaway student thing in like 15 seconds if you... Gave any of these guards a gun, right? Oh no, Logan Paul's gonna hit me. Bye, but there's an eagle. Oh, now he's dead. Like, you'll allow culling of students, but no guns. It, it just doesn't make any sense. It's America. If you can't tell already, Lena is basically the new love interest for Logan for the rest of the film, using their experiences in the campus to strengthen their relationship. They even flirt a little bit offset. I would say sweet. Peyton List, Aww. Peyton List is sweet. There's even a compilation on YouTube of them being just so cute and wholesome. Oh boy, I hope nothing bad happens to her. We need to find where they keep the test. What are you gonna do? Steal the answers for next year? Excuse me? Oh, you know, for your little side business? Where you sell the answers to desperate kids for money. Innocent kids are killed to meet a bottom line. And you found a way to profit off them. Tell me, Lena, what did you spend the money on first? I don't even understand where this accusation came from. Logan was asking her at the start of the film for a way to cheat. A nice dress, maybe. So we're at the Gucci store right now. We're not allowed to film in there. No, I'm going to do it anyways because I'm a savage. But this jacket that we like. <laughs> yeah, all right. Let me just show you anyways. Hey, yo, good morning, Logan. Good morning. This jacket is $7,500. Also, she's not technically hurting anybody. She's saving people that would be killed. Unless, of course, it's a percentage of bottom scoring students instead of a threshold. Then, yeah, okay, she's inadvertently punishing people who didn't buy the lens from her. Also, the money Lena made was used to pay for her mother's treatment. So, uh, Logan feels a little bit bad. I'm such a dick. I'm sorry. It's okay. Thank you for admitting you're a dick. I've made a severe... I just always liked you, and I guess I was kind of jealous of Ellie. You like me? Liked. Past tense. Literally so pointless. Yeah, my girlfriend was alive. Past tense. Logan's dad is being grilled on national TV about the campus being shut longer than it needs to be. We're getting word that the school is still under lockdown. Now, the test should have ended hours ago. 
parents are growing concerned, with no word as to whether or not their children are safe. Now, Governor, what do you say to these concerned voters? Um, uh, well, while I don't have any immediate details on the incident, I can say that we do have the best team in the nation on site. Logan and Lena still stuck in the vents until the vents do the thing that happens in pretty much every video game and movie. They collapse. I like how if you slow down the footage, it's obvious Logan just dived from a board and they added the debris as a green screen in post. Lena jumps in and inevitably saves him because without Logan Paul, the audience would realize that this is a daytime program on the sci-fi channel. What the hell is this? We passed the test. This is bullshit. I want to go home. No one has told us anything. Are we just supposed to sit here indefinitely? Nobody leaves this room until we get the all clear. Don't tell me what to do. Do you have any idea who my parents are? I'm leaving. Stay back! I like how they talk like they have any kind of moral authority. Do you know who my parents are? And of course, they get aggressively beaten because that's exactly what a non-violent confrontation deserves. <laughs> Back in the vents, Lena drops her fob that worked for her like at one Wait. door, so it's Wait. pretty much pointless Wait. anyway. But what this does do is force a tense scene where Lena might have got caught if the guard took more than two seconds to look into the vent. They break into a lab to get a makeshift magnet to get the key fob back, but not before Logan Paul gets jump scared. Guys, I have no idea who's gonna win. The average build man wearing pounds of clothing slowing him down, or Logan Paul, the man who beat KSI and only lost because of a point difference. Yeah, of course, Logan wins and takes the guy's clothes that seem to fit him perfectly. Play. You take care of that. I'm going to this inning. Thank goodness this particular guard was six foot two and had the exact same shoe size. Only problem is now, he'll get instantly spotted because he doesn't have any eye makeup. Meanwhile, Mason, getting bored of not actually contributing to the story, just goes complete joker mode. You got beat up by a girl. No, sir. Uh, well, yes, sir. It was two of them. <sighs> two girls. No, it was a male student. They got the jump on me. The, the other said she was a teacher. It's about sending a message. They're now searching the teachers, and the one that helped Lena earlier on swipes another fob from the teacher who was doing sexual favors from students. At this point, just get a 3D printer and make copies of the key because, you know, Lena's going to keep losing them anyway. Lena eventually makes it into the server room and has to guess Mason King's password. One thing I do like here is that they actually use a plot point from earlier. Kellen has access to his dad's account so he can view all the cameras, so he can see what Mason typed into the keyboard. I mean, it's better than the gag about guessing the password and getting it right first time. Obviously. <laughs> Mason now knows that one of the teachers has gave their key card to one of the students. So Lena's teacher, Mrs. Birch, dodged a bullet by yoinking the other teacher's fob. I mean, sure, this guy's gonna get brutally beaten and probably killed, but he did also send girls to their deaths after getting favors, so... J justice? <laughs> Lena gets the security footage of Mason putting in his password, and how you're able to make out anything of that is astounding. She also finds out that she did indeed pass the exam with 98%, but was marked as a fail anyway, as her score was swapped with Logan. And in an even bigger cope to defend his son, the governor single-handedly blames Lena for the whole school being shut down. This morning, approximately 11.45 a.m., Lena Michaels, a student at Vista Point High, I failed an exam. She then proceeded to attack several DPC officers, injuring two and tragically killing two others. Since then, the students have been moved to a safe place and are being protected under a watchful eye of our teachers until Ms. Michaels can be apprehended. Lena ends the lockdown, so there's a signal available. So Kellen sends the footage of the student being beaten to the press because hitting a passing student is worse than killing people that didn't pass an exam. That really says a lot about our society. Lena gets caught by a guard that's walking like a frog for some reason and bumps into Mason. Take her to the thin air. This scene is so awkward. It's like he was trying to think of a snarky one-liner, but completely froze up. Come on, man. Play one Dead Rising game before you take the job of the villain. You may now feed the bride. 
I still love how the system of killing people is normalized, but one person gets failed dishonestly and the whole world cries. What about people that have reading problems like dyslexia? Well, then everyone loses their minds. No one seems to have any headphones on for these questions. The media get the false test scores from Kellen who leaked them. And of course, like the real life media, run it without verifying like it's complete fact. Just moments ago, we received official documentation from inside the high school, revealing falsified test scores, possibly to favor or target specific students to evade or endure the thinning. Among those wrongfully accused of failing the exam, Lena Michaels received one of the highest scores in the school. Blake Redding, son of Governor Dean Redding, passed the exam despite having the lowest score at Vista Point High. And this leaves the governor in a tight spot, because if he can't prove the thinning isn't corrupt, he'll lose his run for presidency. There's one more move. No, please! No! No! Well, for five more minutes of runtime, it's gonna be a pretty conclusive move. So the governor calls Mason and tells him, no, you can't kill the children. Not because I've had a change of heart, but because I then can't become president. But sir, we've built our entire society off killing children. I know, but someone at CNN went and told, so now I look like a meanie. So calling off the thinning gives everyone an automatic pass. A pretty flawed system that you need this specific person to confirm or deny the thinning. Like, could you imagine he was just, you know, in the bath or something? Oops, I've dropped my phone. And if I don't answer, it's an automatic yes. Eh, whatever. Sir, we just have confirmation your son threw the test a second time. God damn it. Give me another iPhone 11 now. But in a weird turn of events, all they actually did was swap Lena with Logan. So all the other students are still going to die. On top of that, they take random students who passed and kill them anyway. This gives the jock character you forgot about another five seconds to overact. Whoa, time to go. Get off, bro. Move out. Bro, that's my throwing arm, bro. Do you know who I am? The students get injected with needles that for some reason sound like they're drills in a dentist's office. And Logan's dad, like a true Chad, completely lies about any involvement and just blames the man that he gave the order to. Of Mr. King. As of tomorrow morning, I am appointing a special committee to fully investigate what happened at Vista Point. And if Mr. King is guilty, he will dearly pay for his unlawful actions. He will pay, not death. That's for the children. He also goes on to say how his son is no different and he's not a hypocrite. And obvious lying aside, this sentence shows how flawed the thinning is. As much as I love him, he's no different than any of your sons or daughters. I'm not a hypocrite. The rich will always benefit more from the thinning. I get that's the point of the film, you know, who society bad, but people with more money and more time will always be able to benefit more. Logan, if he cared, could have used the best tutors instead of, you know, dusting off library books. I just love how this guy is scummy enough to use his son as a talking point to show how good the system is. It's genius. All his dad did was reverse things to the way they were before you intervened. Only now, innocent people died all because of you. We cut to Logan, who, surprise, surprise, is alive. The injection was just a sedative. Guys, I knew he was just being put to sleep. It's like no country for old men. And we find out that the failed students aren't actually killed, but put to work underground to make iPads. Get it? Because they failed the exam, so now they're like second-class citizens because they're, they're literally underground. Also, weird analogy to how underpaid people are making tech, by the way. Also, Ellie, Logan's, I guess, now ex is alive now, but Logan already has feelings for Lena and vice versa, so... Uh... Awkward? <laughs> The film ends. Like, I genuinely watched the credits thinking they'd be like a post-credit sequence, but no, nothing. Overall, the thinning is honestly quite disappointing. There's genuinely a good concept here, and I feel like they didn't delve near enough deep into it. I think they shot themselves in the foot by making the film take place only a day before the thinning, so there's no real time for world building. We could have seen how society has changed. Maybe things are so perfect and sterile that it makes people slowly go insane. But we never look into this because we barely ever leave the campus. It's just an hour and 20 minutes of Logan Paul doing jump rope, filming his apology video and diving into a pool. It's apparent that this was a passion project. I mean, everyone on set enjoyed making this film. It wasn't just for money, but I feel that, you know, it could have just been so much more. I'll be honest, I do enjoy Michael Gallagher's films. They're a guilty pleasure. And even though I come across as bitter, they're great films to watch with friends, even though this isn't a great film, bordering on so bad it's good, but not totally abysmal. But to be fair, I probably wouldn't have covered this if Logan Paul wasn't in it. Well, that's it. Pretty much all I wanted to say on the film. You're welcome. Uh, there is a sequel though, so depending on how this video does, uh, I might 
cover it? Okay, you know what? Stretch goal. 19 billion views and I cover the sequel. That's fair, no. right? Okay, great. Nice. Go back to quarantine. Thank you.